He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for he will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took out the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Rome. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches.
God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day and the seed would sprout and grow he does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk then the head and the full grain of the head. And when the grain is ripe, it wants it goes in with a sickle because the harvest is come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds of earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables. But he explained everything in private to his disciples. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord.
and true. When I was a young child, I was given a black American saddle horse. Her name was Molly. She had a blazing white star on her forehead. She was very gentle. A seven-year-old could ride her. Oh, no. 
sometimes it means forgiving as well. So God is present. That is the promise. I will be with you. Like the DNA of the seed that will give it growth, maturation by sun and water. You will grow up in your faith. Your hope will be secure. And you will know that you are loved. And because you know you are loved of God, you are able to love one another. That's the biblical witness. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, take notice of how the seed of faith, the seed of hope, and the seed of love has taken root in you. How is it growing? Have you inspected its roots lately and tried to stick it back in the spirit of the soul? Or are you nurturing it with prayer and fellowship and sacrament and peaceful rest and meditative silence? I cannot do this homily on Father's Day this year without paying some respectful thanks to God for my dad. He may have been the single most influential factor of my life and development. When I was a child, I didn't see him as much as I wanted. He worked away from home drilling oil wells. We lived wherever he drilled in the summer. But that man would drive all night to be at home Christmas morning when we were children. Sometimes we'd look out and there would be snow and ice dripping off his car when we got up. When he gave me the horse, he warned me, you cannot let her have her head. Do not race this horse across the pasture because if you do, she will take the bit in her teeth. You will not have control and you could get hurt. Yes, sir. So one day we were at the pond fishing. He taught me to fish. And he said to me one time, I don't trust anybody who doesn't fish. Oh, no. <laughs> so I was allowed the first time that day to ride my horse back to the house. And he was going to drive his truck. Again, he warned me, do not race me to the house. <laughs> well, off we go, and I'm hanging on to the saddle horn, and off the rope, the rope, the rope, and Molly takes a hard right under a shed that had a slant to it that cleared the saddle horn about two inches. My dad's truck comes winding around. He stops, he jumps out, he expects to see me dead on the ground. I'm hanging upside down to the neck of the horse with my fingers buried in her mane. He pries me loose. And he says, get back on that horse. <coughs> I am done riding today, says I. <laughs> no, you're not. Get back on that horse, because if you don't, you will never, ever have control of her again. So I've been getting back on horses for a long time. <laughs> My dad had an eighth grade formal education. When he died, the librarian at the church said he'd read everything in the library. I remember him reading at night in bed when he was home. And his last book was always the Bible. When he was dying of pancreatic cancer at the age 66, I was sitting by his bedside at the hospital, and he was 
was talking to someone, it wasn't me. It wasn't the nurses. It was Jesus. And that's how he was. He didn't preach. He didn't lecture. He didn't rebuke. He helped when he could, wherever he was. And he taught me have a sense of humor. Don't take yourself too seriously because nobody else will. He taught me a bit. And most of all, he taught me to stay centered, to nurture my faith, to know I'm loved, and to retain my hope that we will never, ever, ever be outside God's loving embrace. So where does that put us today? God is with us. God has a plan for Holy Trinity. Look at that first reading. Pray that reading. Read, learn, and inwardly digest the message of Samuel being sent to anoint the king of Israel and the seven sons of Jesse come forward. They're the likely ones. They're brilliant. They're excited. They're energetic. They're affable. They're popular. They've got just the right credentials. And God says, not this one. Not this one. Not this one. Not this one. Don't you have any? sons, Jesse? Well, we've got that kid. He's out tending the sheep. Well, send for him. No one, no one, no human in this whole story thinks David will be the one. And they bring him in and God says to Samuel, this is the one. Anoint him. I think that was a bit of a wait. I think that was a bit of an awakening. I think that was hard on Samuel and Jesse and his older brother. God often chooses who we overlook. People want a Messiah as a warrior king and God chooses a child who will die on the cross. Builders reject the stone and others make it the cornerstone of the building. Rome has legions. Christ has disciples. God is. And God loved you. You are God's beloved community. And I'm going to remind you of that. As long as I am with you. God has planted in you seeds of faith, hope, and love. And our job is to nurture them in each other and to be patient while they take growth and mature to the blossoming plant they are meant to be.
especially Laura and Dorothy. For the sick in body, mind, or spirit, especially Dolly, Jeff, Frank, Kathleen, Lori, Tobias, Lynn, Cora, Donnie, Anya, Alston, Fisher Tom, Diane, Donna, Jean, Evan, Julian, Charlie, Kyle, Michael, Jim, John, Linda, John, Paul, David, Danny, Anderson, Jim, Doreen, Sandy. And for those that we now name in our hearts, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, especially Genevieve Rowell.
got to consensus on moving a name forward to the vestry. And so the next step is, if the vestry agrees, then the person is offered the position, a letter of agreement is agreed upon, and the bishop has to approve the person. And after all that happens, then you can know the name and all the details. <laughs> so moving through this process is a little bit like watching the garden grow. Yes. yes. <laughs> yes. We eat from time to time, and, and, and there are things that work and things that don't, and disappointments along the way, and, and so you've got to continue being in the moment. Right. Um, so I, I solicit your prayers as well for the vestry uh, tomorrow night. Sometimes when the process seems fraught with danger is where we need to take a moment and be sure our discernment is tuned up and that we are really listening to God and we're not just doing what we want. And so that's always the challenge in discernment. But remember, there's discernment on the other side too. And so any candidate that might be considering Holy Trinity is in discernment, at the same time, Holy Trinity is in discernment about the candidate. So that whole process is a little bit like Samuel looking at Jesse's sons. <laughs> anyway, um, think about it and uh, do not despair. God has a rector in mind for you. I am sure of it. <laughs> that would probably not fly with the bishop since I am way past retirement age. <laughs> However, I can tell you, Brian and I had a Zoom council with Flip Ledger last night. He lives over in Essex, New York, in preparation for Monday. We too seek spiritual advice and counsel and guidance. And I am not ashamed to say I have had a spiritual director for at least 25 years. Flow is as good as they get. And I have not always followed her advice, and it ended up just about like not following my dad's advice. <laughs> so I've learned that there are voices that are sent that I should pay attention to and that she's one of them. And after our consultation, Fran and I talked by phone, and we want you to know we care deeply for you. We think you're wonderful people. We think this is a parish with incredible potential. And we want to see you grow and flourish. So we're in it until we're not. <laughs> Whatever that takes. Okay? So walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice.
one that from before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being. Sun, moon, and stars, earth, wind, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forgive us. Time and again you called us to live in the fullness of your law. And so this day we join the saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we
We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We are ready for our body, for we all share in the one bread. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Holy food for holy people.
please pray with me. God of abundance, you have given us the of our life and the of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another. You have made us one of all your people and have been in honor. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Pilgrim God, bless us with courage when our way is fraught with danger. Bless us with good companions when we way demands a common cause. Bless us with humor, for we cannot travel lightly when weighted down by solemnity. Bless us with humility to learn from those around us. Bless us with decisiveness when we must move quickly. Bless our lazy moments when we need to stretch our limbs for the journey. Bless us, lead us, love us, and bring us home bearing the gospel of life and the blessing of God, creator, redeemer, and sanctifier be with you.